Good day, everyone, and how y'all doing today? That's right, I'm sick. Thanks, Fernando. Anyways, who doesn't like leftovers? I mean, let's think about it. Right now, this time of the year, it's all about leftovers. Leftover turkey, leftover ham. There's no leftover bread, though. As Oprah says, I love bread. Those hot, buttery rolls. Okay, anyway, so we have leftovers. Not food, of course, cars. Sometimes when we're filming, a day goes by, we might have too many cars for that day that we just can't put them all into one video because I like to go to bed by at least two o'clock in the morning. So what happens is, is we end up with, you know, one, one off car. So now that we have a bunch of them, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a video that comprised of all those leftover cars. As we like to always say, on to the next one. In this case, it's a leftover. Hope you guys enjoy as always. Next car on the list, Chevy Cruze. So every now and then when you're working on a car, you hit a roadblock. And it's like, whoa, what the heck? And this Cruise is one of those cars. And the reason why it is, is because it has a top display screen. Let me show you. This guy right here is the infotainment display as well as air conditioner display. And also there are some basic car settings in here depending on the model you have. What we've ran into is that all of these get controlled through the steering wheel controls. Which as you can see right here, he has no steering wheel controls. So in order to change the clock, the date, you need steering wheel controls in order to do that. Or you need a secondary control device that you add into the Metro interface in order to control those. Pack also makes a generic interface for this, which just basically powers up the radio, steering wheel controls, basic stuff like that. But it doesn't retain the factory display screen. It just stays black. So the two options the customer has is one, we can use the Metro piece, which will give us I had a question. Yep. Uh, cruise control still gonna work, right? Yeah, yeah, that's not a fact. Of course. All right. <laughs> So, we, so we gave the customer two options and explained to him what is going on. So option one is go with the Metro piece. You'll see your air conditioner work, see the fan speed, see the temperature, but it's always gonna say the same date, the same time, and the same temperature. Option two is to go with the pack piece and the display stays black. Now, if he goes with option one, he can buy the secondary controller and access those. So he has all the cards on the table. He opted for, he much prefers a black screen. He doesn't care about the date, the time, the radio already has that. He knows how to adjust his air conditioning controls. It's not like it, he can't see that. He wants to go pack he wants to go black and that's where we're at sound like cat in a hat so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up an rp4 to this we're not gonna hook up the metro piece as i've already said we spent enough time on this on the back end that you guys haven't seen so i just want to get this thing out of here let's get going fernando now another thing we're putting in this car is sirius xm so we're gonna go ahead and get the microphone uh, the microphone we're gonna go ahead and get the antenna mounted here in the back of the car because it doesn't have it from the factory this guy's a traveling salesman so he spends all day in the car he doesn't want to burn up his minutes because he's talking on the phone he wants bluetooth he wants yeah he wants that stuff so let's get to it let's take a look at the parts we are going to use and the parts we could possibly have used so you guys know for your own if you have a cruise and you'd like to retain those because you have the steering wheel control buttons if you would like to retain the top screen and and you have steering wheel controls, go ahead and get yourself the Access by Metro, the GM OS 044. If you don't have steering wheel controls and you want to keep it, you can get their secondary control screen and mount that in the glove box. If you just want to go with a black display screen, then you can do the RP4 GM 41. Now, the dash kit that you need, this cool silver piece right here, is the 993011S for silver. You're also going to need an amplified antenna an adapter which is this guy right here which is the BAA DIN 22 so now that we have all this laid out let's get to it now if you got to this part and you have your harness looking all sexy and then you get here and you say hey wait a minute there's two green wires which one is the left positive and which one is the reverse what you want to do is take your digital multimeter set it to continuity and that's when it does this and then just go ahead and come into the smart harness put your probe on the green wire 
And when you hear it make continuity, just go ahead and fold it down. Now you know which one is the reverse wire and you can continue on hooking it up to your aftermarket radio. All right, so changing plans on the dash kit. Best Kits makes a black version of the dash kit, which is the BK GMK 367B. When the customer saw this, he was like, ooh, I like the black, as opposed to the silver. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the AC vents from the silver kit and put them into the black kit. All right, so there we go. This is the silver, this is the black. So this is the black. So you have the black here, you have the black here. This will be silver, but for the most part, that's all black. Now here's the silver. I kinda gotta agree with him. I like the black. I think this stands out too much. The Best Kits has this little trim ring here. It's designed to go inside of just like this which shrinks the hole up. And the radio is gonna sit behind it like this. And it's a plenty big opening, so if you have like a seven inch motorized, you should be just fine. Now, the rest of the kit comes in this little bag here. It has a pocket, it has some clips, and it has some screws. We're not doing a single din, so we can throw this away. Now, these tabs here are for the pocket, so you just wanna go ahead and break those off. And then there are gonna be little humps there, so you wanna sand those down. So this kit is one of those kits where you mount it in and then the dash bezel snaps over it. So you have to guess where this needs to go. We're gonna go ahead and just pick a random spot and screw it in and then we'll go test fit it in the car. All right, it fits pretty good. Sorry I didn't take you along with me. So we're about an eighth of an inch from this first step to this. This guy here, which is the AC controls, these need to be cut a little bit here and here. If you go to page two of the instruction manual, it'll go ahead and show you where they need to be cut. Basically, you just need to make some room for the radio. So where these white lines are, that's what we need to remove. So as you just saw, Fernando mounted the Sirius XM antenna right here on the trunk lid of the car. Comes up and around and then tucks up behind the factory carpet. And then we go ahead and loom it up and zip tie it into the factory loom wire. There again, more loom following the factory run. Hi, Fernando. Say hi. So now he's gonna go ahead and follow it down behind the seat and up through the floorboard. All right, so I definitely agree. The black dash kit is a much nicer looking dash kit than the silver. I think it finishes it off. What do you think? Yeah, looks better. Yeah. Definitely. So if you have a Chevy Cruze, you might want to think about going with that black dash kit instead of the silver one. So if you have a Chevy Cruze, you might want to think about going with the black dash kit too, instead of the silver one. All right, guys, as we always say, on to the next one. Next up on the list, Mazda 3. So what we're going to do in this Mazda 3 is put in his amp and subs. He's got a CT Sounds 1000. He's also got one of these cool CT Sounds bass knob and voltmeter. He's going to put in a Singleton Pioneer, this guy right here. And and he's already got two Scar Audio what look like tents. Let's take a look. Yeah, those are definitely tents. But we're gonna have to take them out of the box because I don't know what the heck this is other than some crappy wire coming out of the box. can see how Fernando's getting along with the amplifier. So what do we got going on here, buddy? Wow. I have a ton of... It's gonna sit up like this? Yes. Underneath the seat? Underneath the seat, yes. Okay. This is gonna be the vent, so they can Oh, okay. This that. can sit up that high? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's got a ton of room. Yeah. So that's looking good. Thank you. 
All right, let's take this over to the bench. So we're gonna use the RP4 MZ11. Now what this allows us to do is interface with the data bus of the car, as well as add the steering wheel controls. If it's got an amplified system, it has the RC outputs. If it doesn't have them, you just go ahead and whack these off. These instructions are in depth as far as things you need to know before you start. Typically, and they label it, important notes. And this car is in there a bunch of times. So you definitely wanna read these to make sure, and it's not any one particular car like it's a Mazda 3, it's a CX-9, it's an RX-8. There's a ton of notes right here that you wanna read. Then it'll explain the wiring, and then when you turn the page, there's more notes, and these have to do with the steering wheel controls. I can't express enough how important it is to read this. I mean, you can skim it, like in this case, you just go through and look for your car where it says your car, which is, you know, Mazda 3. That's fine, but Important stuff. Steering wheel controls, we're doing a Pioneer. It's got a sticker on here that says don't plug it in until you set it, so what do we do? We wanna set this, and it's a Pioneer. So you could probably say it from memory, seven. Let's go ahead and turn this to seven. Now we can get rid of this silly sticker. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and get all this tape off here, figure out what's in this harness, what needs to be hooked up, what doesn't need to be hooked up. Let's take a look at the kit we're gonna use for this. It's the 997504 metric kit. Now for these metric kits, what they do is you add these little wings here onto it on either side, and that will allow you to kind of lock it in place. Then all you do is you slide this guy in like this, kind of locks in place, and then this guy here snaps over the front like that. I like to add a little bit of glue here and on this side just to keep it from popping back out because it isn't the strongest mount there is. Now we have this cool CT Sounds thingy here that we kind of want to stick maybe here into the pocket. So what I want to make sure to do is make sure that these wires are sticking out of the back here. What I think I'm going to do is drill two holes so that I can fit a screwdriver through the bottom. All right, so this guy has four wires. And according to this, we have a remote in, remote out, power, and ground. Let's look at this for a minute, shall we? Let's look at the picture. Remote in is orange. I'm not colorblind, and I'm assuming neither are you. Do you see an orange anywhere on there? Remote out is blue, that makes sense. Ground is black, which is gray. I can understand that one. And then red is battery. There again, there's no orange on here. I'm guessing it's a typo, and that orange is actually supposed to be yellow. Awesome. good here we have a radio we have that cool base knob what we did is we put some tape on the inside then filled the holes with hot glue that way you can't see the holes and won't be able to drop little stuff down through the two little holes we drilled and if we need to we can just push those back out and remove this we have the RCA's hooked up we have our output to the amplifier this is gonna get into our harness Okay, so without the car on and the remote turn on hooked up, we get sound, which means this doesn't have an amplifier. We can go ahead and cut these RCAs off and get this harness wired up. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the reverse parking brake and VSS wire short because this car doesn't need them. Now it has this here, it says see instructions for use. So let's go ahead and see instructions for use. Blue wire and vehicle harness, 2013. Mazda 3 with nav. We don't have any of those. All right, so we're good there. This is just the power antenna. Let's go ahead and see if it even has a power antenna on that. All right, so looking at his harness, there is no power antenna and there is no amplifier turn on. And he has an analog dimmer wire. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this orange white wire short too, because we won't be using that. And because we're not using the blue wire, we're not gonna need the green white wire. So we can go ahead and cut that short. What the hell is this? So what we wanna do is add in the three wires that we're gonna need for the CT sounds piece. We'll go ahead and solder these into here and then solder this onto there and then get it into the car.
Now, the one piece I almost forgot about was the silly display that these things have. We need to be able to relocate that into the car. It gives you this pocket that you can screw right in, as well as these guys here, which are designed to help retain this. Now what these have is they have a, a nipple and a hole which line up with this hole and this hole and the nipple goes into the hole like such and then they do give you a screw and a nut for both sides. Alright let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up. Alright, since we're going for a one ohm load, what we went ahead and did is take four equal length 16 gauges, solder them into a 12 gauge like we ran back, and we're going to go ahead and connect them all up to the subwoofers and get these things screwed back in. Check it out, this is the cool CT sounds things. You can turn the subwoofer on and off, and then it'll give you the battery voltage. Well, let's take a listen. All right, the Mazda's done. Bye, Mazda. All right, guys, you know what this means? On to the next one. So next car on the list is a Toyota 4Runner. We got us a late model Toyota 4Runner here. The customer, we had previously installed the 4200 in his car with a backup camera and some Sirius XM. Apparently he has decided to change cars. So we're gonna go ahead and install his 4200 with backup camera and Sirius XM into this car. Now taking a look at the dash, this one already has a Pioneer in it. Hopefully they didn't cut the plug or anything silly like that. We'll go ahead and get this center console out so we can run the two USBs into here. We'll go ahead and get this all. Well, we got a lot of stuff we're gonna go ahead and get apart. Fernando's gonna go ahead and start back here on the rear view camera. Now, the thing to keep in mind on these, this window is motorized. This one goes up and down. So when running your wires, you have to be real careful to make sure you don't do something silly like run the wires where the windows can get caught on it. Plus it has this god awful boot here to try to run through. Not a lot of fun. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that please come enjoy have fun For those of you guys with late model four runners, what you normally see when you pull the radio out is this harness here. This is the amplified harness. Now, don't be alarmed that it's covered in yellow. It, it shouldn't be. Toyota, totally shame on you because yellow, anything covered in yellow is typically an airbag light. But if you trace this wire down, it goes into this silver box right here. This silver box is the factory amplifier. Now, on the bottom of it here are two plugs. Now, they already went ahead and did this, but it's these guys right here. These are the standard 1761 Toyota harnesses that you're gonna want to look for. You don't want to try to use this amplifier. You're gonna get engine noise. It just sounds bad. Always bypass this amplifier. Because this is a late model Toyota, it's not going to have any can or data or, or anything silly like that. It's going to use good old fashioned copper wire run through the vehicle. So when it comes to the reverse wire, it's because it's older, our, our tech sheets don't have, we don't have that on this. But I'm pretty confident that the wire is going to be running up front somewhere so we can grab it up here instead of having to run a wire all through the car. Now you can just easily run a wire through the car and not go through this heartache. It, it's totally acceptable whatever works for you. So we've gone ahead and pulled the light to figure out which wire is the reverse wire. Let's take a look. So this top set of bulbs here is the reverse. There is a red blue wire here. We've tested that and that is reverse. It runs into the car. Now we know because of damage and wrecked vehicles and stuff like that, and you know, this needs to unplug somewhere. So there's, 
There's gonna be a plug inside here. What we've done is we've gone ahead and followed in where the red blue wire come in and then it goes into another harness here and then it ends at that harness with that red yellow wire right there. And it looks like the bundle of wire goes all the way to the front. There's not a ton of wiring in this car, which is great. So down here is this main wiring harness coming forward. There's this big plug here. There's another plug back here. Right here, the second pin down, there is a red yellow wire. What we want to do is go ahead and take our multimeter, plug in our probe. We've already got the car in reverse and we get 10.4 volt. And then it goes away when we put it in park. So now we know that's the reverse wire and we don't have to run a wire through the car if we don't want to. We can easily just get it here in the kick. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this wire here. Fernando's gonna finish running that. We're almost into the dash. Yay. So this was the harness for the old car, which looks like it probably was a Toyota as well. We're gonna go ahead and remove this so that we can add this harness to it, which is the new 1761. When I'm transferring things like this over to, I like to put them side by side, even if this was a factory radio, just so I can try to gauge the distance between the two. All right, so the harness is all set and ready to go into the car. Last piece of the install is the running board. Now on these late model Toyotas, they have the worst way to mount these. They have these cool little things here. They go into the hole, you put the screw through and it spreads it apart. Unfortunately, because it's old, it stays apart like this. And when you try to put them back in, they typically break off. So what you wanna do is take yourself a pair of pliers and squeeze them at the tips like this. You squeeze them back together before you try to put them in. That way they're compressed and they will go into the holes and you can screw them back down easily. Then just kind of wiggle them as you're putting them in so that they both go into the hole. There you go. All right guys, so the install on this is done. Let's take a look at it. Gone ahead and put the Sirius XM antenna back here on the roof. This is where we like to put them. He has his backup camera installed right there. The dash is back together. We'll go ahead and remove our cool sock. Now the last thing we have to do before we actually call it quits on this is a software update. We're gonna go ahead and pull it outside for that because we have another car to do. As we say, on to the next one. So the next car on the playground is a truck, an F-250. So we're gonna go ahead and put in a new radio with some steering wheel controls. He's getting the 1330, pretty straightforward install. Let's go ahead and bang this one out, shall we? So for this install, we're gonna use the SWIRC from PAC. Go ahead and set our Bible over here. We're gonna use a BHA 5800 wiring harness. And then the dash kit is gonna be the BK FMK 542. Of course, it comes with a cool universal application guide. So depending on which Ford you have, there's tons of information in here for your specific car. So this is the factory radio Fernando just handed to me. As you can see, the mounts for the radio are way back here. So when we're looking at our cool kit, what we want to do is look for corresponding locations for these. So for example, so these two rear ones here match up to this. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all the other pieces of plastic in order to use this kit. All 
right, so our radio is mounted. As always, straight, check that, move on to the next thing. Next thing we want to start with is the steering wheel controls. Let's find our Ford F-250. All right, so this is an 06. It's a three, so we'll go ahead and write three on the back. This is what's neat about some of the Ford. So it is going to be the white wire. So in this harness, we just need the white wire. Let's go ahead and grab this. The white wire has two brothers. It has a white red wire, and it has a white black wire. For this, we just need the white wire. Now, these other two have resistors on them that in some situations, you need those. So in the past, you'd have to solder in your resistors. They still give them to you. They're in this bag right here. But on this piece of paper right here, they tell you that the white black has a 560 and the white red has a 150 those were the two most common ones ever used so they just solder them in we're not going to need them so we can just go ahead and remove them and the only other wires we're going to need other than the white is the red and black now there are two loops on here this brown and this purple you always leave those unless otherwise they tell you all right now what this is telling us we'll go back to here it says it's the ford 24 pin this is the ford 24 pin and then if you come over here it says pin 18 light blue red and then down here it says C notes none when you see that none that means that that's the only wire that's going to get hooked up you can come over to the 24 pin and find it in your diagram here. The easiest thing to do though, is to just take this over to the car and see where it's at. Plus, the other thing you want to do is you have these two wires right here, blue, white, and blue. Most Fords don't need these. Now we're not gonna rip them out. What we're gonna use those for is we're gonna take these out and repin them where our steering wheel control wire is so that everything can be done in the harness. So let's now go over to the car and check to see if we have either one of these two as well as where this pin 18 actually is. So grabbing the harness, first thing we want to do is check the blue and the blue white do not have anything connected to them. And the blue red wire they talk about is on the bottom right below them. So now what we're going to do is go pull these wires out, come back and pin it where it needs to go. So to get this harness apart, there's a red clip here. Push it. There's another one here. Push that. Always one wants to be a problem. Reach down in with your flathead and pull this guy out. Next, reach in and lift up on the blue and also lift up on the blue white. Go ahead and pull those out. We'll go ahead and go back into the truck, plug this in where it needs to go for the steering wheel. All right, we'll loosely plug it in, we'll flip it over. So it's gonna be on what would be the top row now, the third one over, it's right there. Go ahead. All right, cool. So now this blue is going to be our steering wheel wire. So we don't have to cut this open or anything like that. All we gotta do is solder our white wire onto this blue one. So now we'll slide this red thing back into place. So now the only ones of these papers we still need is this guy right here that says pack and says SWRC on it. We don't need any of this other stuff. So let's just throw it away to reduce the amount of clutter we have. What we want to do is go ahead and open this guy up, page two. We need to set the rotary knob. For this case, we're doing a Pioneer, which is seven. So the rotary knob is here on the side. We'll go ahead and select seven. And then the only other thing we'll need is on the last page here, page three, is the actual programming sheet. We're gonna set this aside for right now till we're done with the wiring. And then once we get in the car, we'll program it. So now on this harness, it's pretty straightforward. You have your eight speaker wires. You have your black, your red, your orange, white, your yellow, and this blue is going to be the steering wheel wire. So now all we have to do is go ahead and match up these colors. All right, so the harness is all set and done. I've talked about this before. I always just zip tie the line for this up into it just in case I need to ever replace this. I don't wanna have to go through a bunch of tape to get this out to replace it. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our sheet of paper. We're gonna grab our harness. Fernando's got the radio. Let's get into the car. All right, so we'll go ahead and plug it in. Plug in our radio. Now we want to go ahead and turn on the ignition while we're holding this button down. Red light comes on, press it three times. One, two, three, it should flash three times. Then wait, it's gonna flash again. All right, now we can either shut off the ignition or just go straight into programming. What do we have here? Volume up, volume down, source and next so we'll make mode push to talk and then we'll leave the rest the same for this we're going to go ahead and go to the pioneer press it once press the steering wheel control it'll blink climb down and then we're going to skip mute skip preset preset source we're going to skip we got track up 
There's no track down, there's no band, no phone menu, no answer call, no end call, voice activation. And then hit it one last time after voice activation. It'll blink a whole bunch of times to let you know that it is doing something. Now we'll go ahead and go into our radio. Select OK, select OK, go to a source, turn it up, turn it down. Now we'll go and grab a iPod cable and plug in and check for VR on CarPlay. What's the weather like today? All right, so the only thing we have left to do is we're gonna do a software update on this, just like the last car. So let me go grab that. Make sure your source is off. Make sure your emergency brake is engaged. Hit gears, hit tools. If you're in this screen here and you wanna know if your emergency brake is engaged, if the Bluetooth icon is lit up white, it is. If it's not, then it is not engaged and this function will not work. So scroll up all the way to system information, select your firmware, check your firmware, make sure it's out of date, hit your back arrow, select firmware update, go ahead and plug it in to the one and only USB. Select continue. If it doesn't read it the first time, unplug it, try it again. I will tell you on these radios, the thumb drive compatibility is weird. It's not as compatible with, like for example, we've been using SanDisk Cruisers. They've always worked. This radio, they don't. We had to switch to a different thumb drive. Hit start and you're going to have to just sit and wait now. All right, so the update is done. Unplug the USB, set your color, your background, your clock, right. your date, and good to go. All right, thank you, sir. All right, update is done, which means this truck is done as well. We're gonna go ahead and get this out of here. On to the next one. Hot damn.